high school buddies. In 12th grade, we were roommates, and that means we get to learn each other's habits. Yeah. So we had a room on the ground floor, and it was a handicap room. And I thought it was, it was a good coincidence that at the Yarra Valley, that my room was also a handicap room. So I thought that was a really good <laughs> cool coincidence. Okay. So anyway, living with Anna was great. She took really good care of me. She did. And you always did. One might think that I'm a handicap since I require so much caring from Anna. I know Patrick would probably vouch for that. She cooks and feeds for me. Even till now, she feeds me still. Simon is starting to feed me as well. It's a great meal, so thanks, Simon. So I remember when Anna came to Brisbane in 2006. It was first year dentistry for Anna, and it was Easter break. She packed a suitcase full of food to come visit. Even Patrick said that, wow, why are you packing like grandma? <laughs> <laughs> and I know that um, um, a lot of the food that Anna got, it's true, Patrick, you can get it in Brisbane, it's the same stuff. <laughs> but yes, you know, but Anna packed it, you know, flew all the way from Sydney to Brisbane, come visit me and just have all this food and she'll just cook for me. So can you, can you believe a friend that would just come, they, they don't just come and visit and have a great time, they come and, you know, she comes and takes care of me. So, okay, so, but you know what, that's the kind of person that Anna is, always loving, always caring, always taking care of people around her. And that's the person that makes and I'm truly special, you know, because she's always thinking about others, seldom about herself, you know, I wish she'd give herself a little bit more credit, but she looks after the people around her. In 2007, Anna rang me up. She went to tell me that she's seen somebody. She sort of had this, you know, reserved tone in her voice. But it's not because she had any doubts or whether, you know, it's not because she was unsure about the relationship. It's because me, I'm just a really blunt person, <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm very protective of Anna, and I hold high standards for, you know, the people around her. So she'll know if I don't like the person, I'll say it to her face, and I won't even sugarcoat it for her. So, so I can be quite critical. Sorry, Anna. I know. But I know you love me for that. So I can tell Anna that she was a bit worried on the phone, because she was worried what I might say or think, you know. But I'll probably just tell it in her face. I can always find faults in people and I don't really dumb it down for her, you know, I don't fluff it up or anything like that. So if I say a person is a jerk, you know, she'll always say, no, you know, she'll find justification for it. She'll always defend them. And that's the type of person Anna is. She'll always find good in people. You know, she doesn't really focus on the faults. She'll always find something good about them. And just you know, put aside the faults and say, you know what, this person innately, they're kind and they're good. So that's the way she is, always forgiving, always have the tendency to find good in people. So I was thinking the other day, Simon's the first guy that I have actually no criticism for. Hey! <laughs> so in high school, we learned that the perfect man is the gingerbread man. <laughs> you guys remember that? But I say today on your wedding day, Simon is your perfect man. And I am happy to be here to be part of such a special day to celebrate the love that will last for the rest of your lives. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Jamie, for that uh, insight into uh, some of uh, Anna's personality traits and, yeah. and history. I've got more stories. I just have to shorten it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh, I'm going to bribe you. Uh, <laughs> bribe it's, me. Uh, I've got good stories, Anna. Come on. It's now time for the best man speech, and uh, I am the best man. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, I, first of all, I'd just like to start off by... Um, on behalf of the bridal party, so the bridesmaids and, and the groomsmen, uh, to thank 
uh, Simon and Anna for inviting us to be a part of this occasion. It's, uh, it's really an honour and, and, and fantastic. Uh, so Simon and I first met in high school. Um, I don't really recall any specific details about when we first met. Uh, and for that matter, I uh, don't really recall that much about high school or prefer not to <laughs> remember that much about high school at all. Uh, there are some things that spring to mind about Simon though. Uh, firstly, Simon had a unique tackling style when playing soccer uh, on the Oval at lunchtimes. So, uh, secondly, Simon's approach to compulsory weekend sport was to become a football umpire. Oh. Thirdly, Simon had an obsession with Dirty Harry. Uh, and then finally, Simon had more hair back then. <laughs> and each of these characteristics helps tell a part of uh, Simon's story, except for the hair, which was really just a cheap shot because I still have most of mine. <laughs> but for how long, no one really knows. <laughs> so after we finished high school, we went to different universities. Uh, Simon chose to study science engineering at uh, University of Melbourne. Amongst other activities, we maintain contact uh, through playing indoor soccer. Uh, and on occasion, Simon was known to arrive for soccer, having already partaken in the primary activity of engineering students, uh, which was not studying but drinking. Um, this further augmented his already unique tackling style uh, to earn him a reputation as a bit of a butcher. Um, Simon was no stranger to butchering. Uh, he took up casual employment uh, at university at Morrow Brothers Butchers in Doncaster. And it's here that Simon would develop a number of skills that would serve him well in his career moving oh. forward. <laughs> uh, Simon would often take over the responsibility for spruiking, uh, drawing on his, upon his experience as a football umpire yelling at meatheads. Uh, he developed his oratory skills and his ability to get a message across by yelling his head off about meat. Um, Simon also learned to handle sharp cutting instruments for cutting into meat and bone. Uh, and it's perhaps here that Simon's future vocation was first forecast uh, because his, co his co-workers at the Butchers named him Doc. Um, after graduation, Simon found employment at Ericsson, uh, where he undertook Swedish language lessons in the hope of furthering his international career prospects and his chances of landing a blonde Swedish model wife. Uh, while Simon did make it to Sweden on occasion, um, he was unable to secure a permanent move or land the Swedish model uh, before he left Ericsson and uh, let's face it, Sweden's loss is our gain. As is often the case in economic declines such as the dot-com crash, uh, Simon found himself in the employ of the government uh, working as a policy analyst for the Australian Communications Authority. And it's here that Simon's communication skills allowed him to excel uh, and he obtained a number of promotions in a short period of time. Uh, at my own wedding, uh, Simon was the best man and he showcased his writing skills uh, to give a best man speech that was so elegant, polished and thought-provoking that my mother-in-law still goes on about it. Um, and so I'm feeling quite a lot of, quite a lot of pressure to, uh, to live up to the standard that he sets. Um, that year was an election year, uh, six, uh, well, six years ago, and Simon used a number of uh, political analogies from the day to describe the courting process leading to marriage. Uh, this year we are once again facing an election year. I thought that I might be able to steal, uh, adopt a similar tact with uh, imitation being the sincerest form of flattery. So uh, I decided to go straight to the top and I consulted the Prime Minister about the institution of marriage. Uh, what he identified is a series of confidence and security building measures coming off the back of the courtship and engagement phases, leading to the development of some short-term targets, some medium-term targets, and some long-term targets, anchored in a system of holy matrimony which is globally compatible and able to be rolled out as a marriage contract, steeped in the tradition of religious faith, but underpinned by the strong positive emotions of regard and affection, where both parties hope to get a fair shake of the sauce bottle. <laughs> it's really little wonder that Simon decided to leave the government bureaucracy. Uh, although not too many people would have uh, traded in a secure job to move to a new state and commit to uh, five years of poverty as a student. 
Um, so I might even argue that his choice of dent dentistry as his field of study shows little progression from his initial job as a butcher. <laughs> when Simon joined the Navy uh, to assist fund his way through school, 